Hello everyone. I wanted to go over this problem about throwing rocks while you're standing on ice. Um, this is a pretty fun problem um, to look at and think about because I'm sure that we've all at least thrown rocks onto ice. But anyway, um, the point here is that we have uh, a sheet of ice. Uh, Why it's tripping out on me here, but let's use this. So we've got a sheet of ice, which means that we're frictionless. Well, generally it's frictionless. Um, if it's not frictionless and we're on ice, it usually says something like rough ice or something like that. Uh, but here we are standing on ice with a big rock. We have that rock and we're going to take that rock and we're going to throw it. All right, so it's so slippery that we can't move, but we're hold luckily we're holding this rock. Um, so we're going to throw this rock forward, well, I guess specifically it says we're going to throw it at an angle of 35 degrees, oh, that is not horizontal, let's make that a little horizontal here, okay, so 35 degrees off of that, we have some initial velocity that we're going to give to this rock, and, um, We're given, well, we have our mass of our person. The rock also has a mass. And what we want to find is the speed that we move after we throw the rock. So there's a, a velocity final here that we're going to be looking for. So that's our end goal, is this final velocity. So. What we need to look at is a change in momentum. Now, change in momentum tells us that if there's no external forces, right, there's no external forces happening on us and the rock, us and the rock of the system. So if that's the case, then we have a change of momentum equal to zero if our net external force equals zero, right? Because there's a relationship between that external force and our net. Our, our net external forces and our change in momentum, specifically a, a rearrangement of that Newton's second law, where net force is equal to delta P over delta T, or specifically, I guess this is the average, right? But if then we want to talk about the instantaneous, then we have the derivative. So because of this, if our external forces are zero, then our change in momentum can also then be zero which means that we can state, so if our delta P is equal to zero, then that means that our initial momentum is going to equal our final momentum, which means that we have to look and see what pieces we have in our initial momentum or what pieces we have in our final momentum. So let's first look at our initial momentum. So our initial momentum is zero. Nothing's happening, right? In our system, we are standing there with the rock, and that's it. That's the only thing that's going on. Um, so actually, now that I'm thinking about it, let's do this a little bit different. Let's call this, um, not the final velocity, but let's call this the velocity of us, the velocity of the person. Okay, so the importance here is that initially, um, we are together, the rock and us are together, we are one system, and we're not moving, nothing's happening. But what happens in the final momentum is that we now have a motion of the momentum of the rock and the momentum of, oops, equals from and the momentum of us the person and those two momentums add up to the momentum final but we know that these two momentums have to be equal so that means that our the momentum of the rock and the momentum of the person have to add up 
to be what? They have to add up to zero. So, oops, I keep stating things and writing them. So because they add up to zero, then we know now that the relationship between the momentum of the person and the momentum of the rock are equal and opposite. So we have our mass symbol. Therefore, the momentum of person is equal and opposite to the momentum of the rock. And the important thing here too is that these are vectors, right? So this cares about the direction at which these things are going. So let's establish a positive and negative. So we'll do a positive Y here and an X here. That then tells us how we can describe the momentum of the person. So let's move this down just a little bit. Well, actually, yeah, we'll just put that up and go on the side. Okay, so let's talk about the momentum of the person. Momentum of the person is given as the mass of the person, and the mass isn't changing, so that stays the same, times the velocity of the person. And that velocity is in what direction? Specifically, it's in the, as we've defined it, the negative, let's do V of the person, or the magnitude, that's the magnitude of the velocity, in the negative i-hat direction. So that's what we can write the momentum of the person. The momentum of the rock is made up of the mass of the rock times the velocity of the rock. And that velocity of the rock has components in both the x and the y direction. So we're going to take out the mass of the rock here and just look at the velocity of the rock in the x direction. And that's a positive i hat. And the velocity of the rock in the y direction. And that's a positive j hat. Okay, so this tells us that we now um, can correlate these momentums together, and specifically, which which one do we care about in solving this in this problem? We only care about this x piece. I guess I should highlight the whole thing, right? So we only care about this x piece of our momentum because that's what we're, we're looking for. Okay, it also tells us, right, that our, uh, well, we'll get to that. Okay, so if we come back to our momentum, um, we want to now look at the initial piece in the x direction and equate that to the final piece in the x direction. And again, our initial is just zero, and our final is this mass of the person times velocity of the person, which is in the negative x hat direction. And we add that to the mass of the rock times the velocity of the rock in the x direction. And that velocity, let's come up here and we can draw this out. This is the velocity of the rock. We know the angle at which that's at, and that's a theta. So that means we have a piece in the x direction, which is our v r x, which is equal to, this is just um, our trig. So this is our v of the rock, the magnitude of the velocity times cosine of the angle. And then we have the same thing for the y piece, where we have v r y is just the v of the rock times the sine of the angle. So then down here, we're just going to use that x piece and add it into our equation so that we have the mass of the rock. Oh, the wrong. There we go. Mass of the person. So I'm going to move this to the other side. Mass of the person, velocity of the person, 
is equal to mass of the rock times the velocity in the x direction, which is the velocity of the rock times cosine theta, which means we end up with an equation for the velocity of person or us standing on the ice as the ratio of the masses times that initial velocity and the angle above the horizontal line. And that is our velocity. All right, so we can plug in the numbers here to find um, or value that is. So with these given numbers, we have mass of the rock. So it's 70, no, other way around. 3 over 70 times 12 times cosine of the angle. So you can get some value for that. Now, um, before we end, I just want to note what is something interesting that's happening here is that we only talked about our momentum in the x direction because what came out of this was this idea that we have this, this y piece from the rock that is, that is what, right? It's sitting by itself. We have some y piece. So what does that tell us then about our initial assumption with this delta p? What it tells us is that, in fact, this delta p, that this is true, in this case, only for the x direction. So we have to go on here, we have to make these adjustments in that this is only true for the x direction. Because what we got out of here for our rock is that there was a y piece of velocity that the rock goes. And if we stated, or as we stated at the beginning, that the momentum was conserved, then there had, has to be some piece of the y um, that is being transferred to the person. And in fact, it, the, the problem is, is that if we do um, if we want to talk about this other force, what other force is acting in the y direction on the person? And specifically, that is some normal force from the ground. The normal force from the ground is, is the external force that's keeping um, us standing there with the rock, and so there is an external force that is um, that is being be, that is at play here, and so um, so we can state then that the net or the the change of momentum in the x direction is zero, but that the change of momentum in the y direction is not zero because there's some external force. This force from the from the normal is essentially causing the force um, or allowing us to throw the rock in the uh, vertical direction. Um, so it's an important thing to point out here as we're going through this analysis, okay? In that the momentum can be conserved in one direction, but not in the other. And we can do that because with our vectors, we have to split them up into our X and Y pieces. We are doing that with our net forces. We can do that with our momentums. Um, we do that with our velocities, and so we can do the analysis um, for one direction with this net momentum of x equals zero, um, and then we can do it for the y direction where the this is not the case. Okay, so this is an important problem um, to point out what is what is going on, and that we can split this up if we need to. Okay, so hopefully that's helpful. Let me know if you have other questions.